Okay, so we want to create a square shank grooving tool holder. This is an ISCAR product here that I just read into a spree. And we can see the insert is inside the tool holder. So uh, this product is the GHDR16-4. And let me bring this up on the screen here where we can see it so uh, basically you can see here that there's a range of insert widths that work for this product uh, 4 millimeter to 5.4 millimeter and uh, if you want to follow along you can grab this solid either from the ISCAR uh, website or you can grab it from the machining cloud, machiningcloud.com. There's some solid models of some of these products on there as well. So uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the orientation of this first. And the orientation is correct. We want the blue vector for the XYZ work plane. We want the blue vector going up into the tool holder. So this is correct. Uh, however, the insert is on this side and you can see where Y0 is, it's on this side. So this is Y0 here. We want this side of the tool to be here. And because of the way that we do the holder in Esprit, we, we generate it at the center. So we actually want the zero point to be located right here where my mouse is. So uh, this is uh, this is the we we changed some icons around with the Esprit TNG interface. Uh, underneath Home, we used to have some manipulation commands. Now we have a manipulation toolbar. It's a little bit better laid out here. So all of the manipulations are here. We're going to use the Move Origin, and I'm just going to snap right to this center point right here, and you'll see that that makes my new zero point at that location. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I actually want to flip this tool around the other way because my red vector here is the vector that should be pointing toward the spindle that I'm using on. Um, and what I'm going to do here is just right click. And if you don't have everything selected, you can either window in on everything like that or right click and say select all and then right click again and say copy and we're going to pick rotate and i'm going to say move and for the angle i'm going to put in 180 degrees and yes we will leave this check to rotate around the zero point and now uh, this is the way we would see it in the machine with a right-handed application toward the spindle there now down here at the bottom, I'm going to select this solid for the insert and I'm going to use my solids tab. And if you don't have the solids tab uh, turned on, you can go to home, show hide and select solids tab. You know, all the all the different tabs are are here. So here's your solids tab. And in here, there's a little trick menu. You can right click and say create a bounding box and when you do that you get this um, 3d rectangular geometry and i'm going to pick one of these edges to get the width of this insert just to see where it's at because again there's a range and it's one it's 167 so uh, that is a little bit more than four millimeters so depending on you know, again, you can use different width inner inserts for this. Uh, you know, depending on what uh, what size insert you want to use here, this is basically four and a quarter millimeter. So what I'm going to do is uh, just basically, I don't need this solid for this insert. Get rid of that, and then what we're going to do is shift our work plane down to where I want it. Now we have a, a new manipulation command and, and out of the, the other ones that we've had, uh, this is the, the, the first one here, the modify work plane. When I select this, 
it changes the way the UVW uh, looks, how it's displayed. So what I'm going to do is actually digitize right on top of the Z vector. And when I do that, it activates the ability to slide this up and down. And I'm just going to pick this, you know, any of these bottom corner points to snap it to that height in Z. And then I'm going to pick my U and do the same thing. I'm going to pick that front corner of geometry. And if you zoom in, you'll see that it's not quite. So by doing it along the Z and then along the X, we preserve our Y zero. So why is this important? It's just because if you had a two axis lathe that did not have Y axis, um, because of the machine awareness in Esprit TNG, if you were not at Y zero and you tried to use this to do some grooving, Esprit would want to move the turret, you know, whatever that is, which we'll is call it 50 thousandths or something. It would want to move it, you know, five thousandths or whatever off of center line and it would give you an error because your machine doesn't have y-axis. Esprit is trying to tell you that you're trying to do something that the machine is incapable of doing. So by sliding this using the, you know, the W, the Z, or the U, the uh, X here, we preserve that Y zero. And now what I can do is just come in here and say TA underscore, you know, 4.25 millimeter. That way it's kind of uh, listed there. I know exactly where it is. This is the insert that uh, Iskar had in the component. You know, if you wanted to get creative and make it an even four millimeters, you can do that. Uh, what I would do here is maybe just come to point. I would snap that point to the center there and then use the manipulation modify again and just come here and grab that U and then digitize that point and you'll see that we're still on Y0, but then I'll go ahead and pick this guy and say, well, let's put in an actual value of, I'm trying to get my microphone cord off of my keyboard here. You could put in, you know, 0 0.07874 is what I think it is. And then you'll see that it's not quite all the way to the edge there. And, you know, if you wanted to create an extra one here, TA underscore four millimeter, you can do that. So we have both of them here listed on this uh, square shank holder. And now I'm just going to come to file, save as, and come over here to holder files and save it in with the rest of them. I actually just created this one, so I'm just going to write over that one. And uh, now we have that uh, tool holder. So we can go ahead and now use this in the machine. Okay, so here we have a machine and we've got a tool, the tool holder and the insert. You can see it there highlighted. And then the square shank tool. This is one of the Iskar square shank tools. So I'll just double click that and come over here and go to that folder that I had. This is Iskar turning, uh, I think it was grooving, square shank, and then uh, it was the GD, GHDR 16-4, GHDR 16-4, I think it was the ST, and there it is in all its glory. So the preview You'll see the preview if you have your preview window open. You can turn that on or off there, and uh, you can see different, you know, square shank tools that have been created. So GHD, I think it was the ST one, was that the one that we just made? So I'm just going to say open for that, and that's going to edit that. It's obviously that's that's short there. Um, so this is a, also the the wrong-sided holder, but just wanted to show you that it will come in correctly. Let me turn the machine sheet metal off so we can rotate around a little bit. So you can see that if this was a right-handed holder, the face of this, oh, the face of that um, grooving holder would be correctly fit into that pocket at the center line. The insert itself I have to reverse that because that was for a left-handed tool. 
I'm just going to go ahead and do that now and switch this insert to a right-handed insert. And we see that now. And what I might, what I can also do is, uh, you know, I guess stick that out a little bit further. So you can come in here, and uh, I think this is for a Swiss machine or something. So here, I'll, you could just use your translate command, and I'll say minus one, and that kind of sticks it out like it would be for a uh, you know traditional tool holder like like some of these other ones so I'll say okay there and we see that in the machine this is already a four millimeter insert but uh, basically that is the uh, gist of it you know you create your your tool and then we can go ahead and see that tool run so if I look at the operation list here, I have this groove right there, and we're using that tool to do this grooving operation. So if we look at the simulation and go ahead and start that, so we see the tool. It's going to be, you know, right-hand sided tool, just a demonstration here, and we come in and do the cut. So very, uh, very simple to set up a GDML simulation solid for a square shank ISCAR grooving tool holder. Hopefully this makes some nice digital twins on your programs and uh, let us know if you have any questions.